Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have two great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, management does some machinations with the working hours. A bunch of workers get fired, and new ones don't stay long. The second story, they thought I would help for free after I quit, and balked at my consulting rate. The first story is, cut my hours and treat me like C? This isn't the only hotel in town. I've recently left the hospitality industry and gotta say, I really don't miss it. I was FDA and night audit and a few different properties over the last five years, but thought I would share the first job I quit. It was a Smilton property that was initially managed okay. It was on the older side and in desperate need of a renovation, but it was doing decent business when I was first hired. The manager that hired me had started out in housekeeping and worked her way up to the AGM of the property. And with the GM planning to move out of state to be closer to his family, she seemed most likely to take over as the GM. We were all happy for her because she took care of every department and was never afraid to work wherever extra help was needed, including staying with me overnights when I was starting and my coworker called in sick. When the GM officially announced his exit, we were all excited for the transition of AGM to GM. But as you can imagine by my title, it never happened. From what I heard, she saw an advertisement for the position online. When she confronted the hotel management company that owned the business, they assured her it was just to see what was out there and that they would get her a contract as soon as possible. For some reason, one I never learned the details of, they made an outside hire. Not only was the manager Dave, not his name, completely new to the company, his background was in banquet and event management, and he had little to no hotel experience. Our wonderful AGM obviously knew her worth and immediately got a new position, leaving behind the company she worked for 10 plus years. Dave wasn't too bad at first, and he brought in Ruth, not a real name, as his new AGM. At first, Ruth and I got along really well and I liked her a lot more than Dave, since she actually knew what she was talking about and would answer my emails when something was wrong or needed to be addressed. At the time, I was in community college while working overnights and had a very long commute to both places. It was tough, but the hotel plus the overnight shifts made enough money that I was sort of getting by without having to pick up a second job. Things were going okay, but as soon as we came out of our peak tourist season, my hours were cut and I went from five days to four. It was a bummer, but I figured as long as I stuck to a budget and focused more time on school, things would get better with time. One night I was passing the GM's door where a paper was taped to it with every department's goals, going forward. I stopped to read it since I was all right there, facing the main hallway I had to walk down to get to the FD. Ruth's was also posted, and one of her goals for sticking to her budget was to continue cutting night audit hours and not allow any overtime across all positions. I was honestly hurt to read this as I assumed my hours were cut because it was the off-season, but to see I was a budget cut and the first shift to be reduced as a part of a goal was a little insulting. I told my coworker about it and she immediately went to the manager's door to read it as well, and was also hurt by the language the managers were using. We'd accepted our hours being cut because we knew our occupancy was getting lower and lower, but we also had bills to pay, and the cut had been sudden and with no warning, so it was annoying. On Christmas, I agreed to work a day shift as well as the night before on Christmas Eve and would have that eight hours in between to nap. Like I said, I had a long commute so I was tempted to stay on the property, but figured I would just go home instead. Both Dave and Ruth kept thanking me for covering both shifts since traditionally managers would cover Christmas Day, so everybody could be with their families. They also kept bringing up how good the holiday pay for two shifts was going to be, and that I was lucky to have all those hours of holiday pay. It was honestly the only reason I volunteered for it, but all was good. I came in Christmas Eve and worked my usual shift, left and then came back at 3 to cover Christmas Day, only to find out that since I clocked in at 11pm on Christmas Eve, I was technically working for the 24th and not the 25th, so that 15 hours of holiday pay I was expecting turned into only 8 hours. It wouldn't have bothered me so much, but both managers had known this, but it kept saying holiday pay for both shifts. Also, night audit that came in on the 25th and worked through to the morning of the 26th only got one hour of holiday pay. This was 2017, so I can't remember exact numbers, but I remember my paycheck was disappointing and I would have been better off going home to family. Things kept deteriorating, not just with the FD but all departments. The breakfast server that had been there nearly 20 years ended up giving her notice. Housekeepers began to quit daily. There was one guy in HK that everybody really liked who was written up. No idea why. And rather than sign the written warning he was given, he just got up and left. Again, it's been a while, but it was either four or five others that left it with him that day. 
The one day I needed off was Thursday, as I didn't have class that day and Wednesdays were very long for me. Class all day plus my night shift. It had never been a problem before, but suddenly I was on the Thursday schedule. I switched with another night auditor and went about my business thinking it was just a management oversight. Nope, came back to a very long note in our front desk binder that we were all required to write in and read every shift about how I, yes they named me in the book, had switched shifts without management's approval and this was against policy. It was over two pages long and I remember things were underlined. I did confront Ruth about this the next time I saw her, but she didn't really give me an answer about making me work Thursdays. I knew she wanted me to quit though. In the middle of the winter, the heat suddenly kicked out in the lobby. It was freezing outside. North USA, think negative 20 Fahrenheit some nights. I didn't care if it was unprofessional. I kept my jacket on all night and at one point grabbed a blanket from housekeeping. I didn't have gloves, but I remember the mouse got so cold that I had a hard time running the night audit. I went and sat by the fireplace to warm up before returning to the desk all night. I did end up getting sick over my weekend, but because I needed the cash and this was pre-COVID, I went to work sick three days later only to find out the heat still hadn't been fixed. They brought a tiny space heater to the front desk, but the roof was so high that even with the thing on full blast it was still too cold to be working without a jacket or a blanket. One thing I'd done for several months at this point was laundry on the slow nights. I didn't know how to fold sheets and bedding, but myself and my coworker I was friends with had figured out towels, and we did this in the back where we could watch the front desk but also kill some time folding. One night I couldn't get the dryer to go after I'd thrown some wet towels. It was the lint trap that needed to be cleared, but I didn't know how to do this on the large industrial machine, and rather than break anything I didn't fold anything that night, and knew the load would have to be redone. That morning the head of housekeeping came up and gave me an earful about not taking wet laundry out like that, as it set her behind. I did feel bad but also didn't bother asking how to clean the lint trap. Up to this point I'd been doing her a favor, and after I apologized about the wet towels, my friend and I agreed we wouldn't do any more laundry even on the slow nights when we were bored. Sure enough in the front desk book about a week later there was a new entry about night audit duties, which now required us to do laundry during downtime. Because housekeeping was so short staffed they also asked us to start cleaning the lobby bathrooms. Eventually myself and the other night auditor that I was friends with started to look for new jobs. We'd had enough of the place and it was becoming too much, with 0% chance of us getting paid more for these additional duties. Our hours were still 4 days a week, and while I could never prove it, I had my suspicions that our hours were being manipulated in payroll. My checks did not seem to reflect the hours I was working, and somebody mentioned in accounting that the company had the right to clock us out if our shift was over, and we were supped to be done for the day. Like I said, high turnover. More than once I had to stay later or come in earlier to cover the desk, but I didn't see those extra hours impacting my checks. My friend gave notice when she got a job at a nicer hotel in town, and I gave notice a few days after her when I landed at a much smaller two-star property that I actually really loved. Well managed, I had a chair and a television behind the FD, and was allowed free breakfast every day plus more money. Would have stayed there for years, but eventually moved for school. I later learned the reason our hours were cut is because the management company was selling the property, and the main reason Dave was brought in was to make the place look more profitable. It worked, and the place was sold to the new company, but by then it was more or less gutted of people that had worked there and loved it for years. It still needed renovation, and from what I've seen in reviews that never happened. The rooms are around $400 in the summer, but the beds are old, the carpets are nasty, and the plumbing was always busting. Overall would not recommend. The best part? About a month after two of the three night audit left, the guy they hired for the shift also realized how messed up the place was and quit. Ruth was told she needed to cover overnights, but she had four kids at home and didn't want to work overnights. I heard she quit when they told her she had to cover overnights. About a month into my new job, Dave texted me and promised a raise if I came back. I told him thank you, but that I was very happy at my new hotel. True. He also texted my friend, but she never responded. She was happy at her new property. We talked about it when we grabbed breakfast together. Dave ended up working a lot of overnights. We know this because he had to call my friend when he was oversold the following summer to see if she could take a few walks. I heard he was fired, but I don't know as I've long since moved. The second story is, it finally happened, a growth story. Happened a few weeks ago, but D it felt good. Before finding this sub, I was mostly a hard work pays off kind of person. I've been in manager and director level positions in a somewhat niche industry and always struggled to keep people happy. By the time I realized it was due to cheap and overly critical leadership above me, I jumped ship. That's a story for another time. I started a new job in a different role within the industry four days before COVID lockdown. I was worried I'd get laid off, like so many people were, so I leveraged some of my background to bring a new service line to the company. Needless to say, it took off. 
There were only three people at the company who had the skills to deliver this new service. So between us and vendors that we found, partnered with and managed, we kept the lights on for a solid eight months. As COVID restrictions started to ease, I began to ask what it meant for the future of my role, given how I introduced the service line to the company. Week five of working there, I was presenting the business model to the CEO. Lots of stalling and back and forth. I get pulled into a meeting with HR and the COO. I find out the service line is being phased out. My manager, who is awesome and brought on board specifically for this service line, submitted his notice as soon as he found out, and I get told I need to start coming to the office, was full-time WFH to do the job I was hired for, that I never performed. I moved during COVID so the commute was almost two hours each way, and I found out someone else was taking credit for my work. That person didn't understand it in the slightest, and I actually had to help him do his job when it related to my service line. I put in my notice the next day and offered to stay on for four weeks to wrap up a big project. I was given two weeks and mentioned that I'm the only one at the company who knows the inner workings of the tech stack the project relied on. The guy who was taking credit for my work was put in charge, and friends I made during my time there said things failed spectacularly. I freelanced for a bit before taking another full-time role, where I brought the only other person at the old company who could do my job with me. They didn't have anyone to do the job even if they wanted to continue the service line. Now the fun part. I started getting messages like, Hey, we have to do this using the platform you built. Can you let me know how? In the past, I probably would have helped because don't burn bridges, but this sub helped me stand my ground. Every reply has been the same. Sure, I remember how that was set up. Let me know if you'd like to bring me on for support. Share any key dates and I'll be happy to send you an estimate. It took about three times, but they finally got the hint that I'm not giving them anything for free. Felt great. It blew my mind they didn't want to invest, but I also wasn't surprised. I know my worth, but I'm now more confident to stand up for it and not get taken advantage of. My commute is much better now. Full-time WFH, so one flight of stairs to my office in a specialized role at a company offering a similar service line, making 30% more. Occasionally, I accept consulting work on the side as well, where my hourly rate is four times what I made at the last job. My one-year review is coming up, so my next battle is raise or promotion. Leadership is much better at my new job. I got a 1% raise and 4% bonus after five months of working here without asking. Didn't beat inflation rates, but there's a yearly increase that's guaranteed if the company profits above 15%. Thank you for your likes, comments, and subscriptions. I really appreciate it.